the bridge and head north. Fulton recovery to helicopter is complete. Fulton recovery subject confirmed onboard helicopter. Fulton recovery to helicopter is complete. Too tall to climb. If only you had some equipment. It's a truck route you're on. Their base is up ahead. Move out. Someone attacking? The enemy's attacking! Going to alert status! Understood. Dispatching reinforcements. Proceed with extra caution.
HQ, come in. This is HQ. This is patrol. All clear. Understood. Return to base. Fulton recovery subject confirmed onboard helicopter. Someone attacking? I believe in you, Snake. There should be an entrance about halfway up the mountain. Be careful. What is it? Get up! <laughs> Enemies close by! beyond that fort. You've got to get past it somehow. going on rise and shine
Fulton recovery to helicopter is complete. Inside the facility, there's rows and rows of trucks here. If that's where they brought the nukes, then the truck we're after should be there. Snake, can you tell which one of the trucks brought the nukes? One of them must have the same license plate as the one from the terminal. still warm. The cargo's already been offloaded. Just a minute. This isn't what we agreed on. It's too late. The changes have already been finalized. You told me it was going to be a deterrent that we wouldn't have to launch. I am not arguing with you, Doctor. Our goal is to create the perfect deterrent. That's why I agreed to help develop it. Mm -hmm. However, in order to achieve that perfect deterrent, we must show the world our strength. Three key principles ensure effective nuclear deterrence. First, you must have nuclear weapons. Second, you must never use them first. And third, and most important, if someone attacks you, you must strike back. Unless we prove beyond a doubt that these three principles work in practice, the world will not accept our new deterrent. And the only way to do that is to show them we are capable of actually launching a nuke. But isn't deterrent supposed to stop nukes from being used? Exactly. And so the one we launch will be the last one ever. I won't let you use my creation like that! <laughs> your creation? <laughs> that thing wasn't even your idea to begin with. You stole it, didn't you? <clears throat> stole it? You're one to talk! You got the idea for bipedal locomotion from the communists in the first place! You listen to me, Doc. Keep quiet. Do as I say. Not another word about stolen ideas. Should we succeed here, you'll be the toast of the scientific community. And your name will go down in history as champion of both progress and national security. The hell with that! Doctor! Unless we prove we are capable of launching, Peace Walker is useless as a deterrent. You used me! We used each other. I'll get my old director's job back at headquarters, and you'll finally be able to walk tall among your colleagues. Uh, I won't let you get away with this! How unfortunate. Guess I'll just have to take your legs for myself! <laughs> Peace, Lord 
just come to us, Doc. We are going to have to meet it halfway. V for victory. Wait! <laughs> hey, you okay? Don't do it! Snap out of it. Where are the nukes? He's gonna do it! He's gonna launch a nuke!
snake. I've never seen anything like that, and I've got no idea how to bring it down. Maybe the scientist knows. However you do it, take that thing out. What was the government thinking, building a power plant at the top of a mountain? With no river to replenish the water, the lake would dry up pretty quick. If it were an ordinary power plant, but the plan called for a pumped storage power plant. Pumped storage power plant? Kaz mentioned that too. What is that? It is a facility that generates electricity by pumping water up to the lake, then letting it run back down. Huh. Seems Sisyphean to me. If they turned the water into electricity as soon as they had pumped it up, sure. But a pumped storage plant acts as a kind of battery. A battery? For instance, they could pump at night when there is surplus electricity and store it for later use. If they need extra power during the day, they can generate it using water pumped up during the night. I get it. It's a little more difficult to adjust output with thermal or nuclear plants. The thing is, Costa Rica won't have enough electricity to meet its needs. Right now, there is no surplus. Maybe that's what put the brakes on the project. Must have played right into the CIA's hands. Watch out! It's El Galapago! It reduces its body weight by blasting air underneath it. That makes it a lot faster than any tank. It also has a tight turning radius. Any weak points? Taking out its boosters could reduce its acceleration. You could also try destroying its machine guns. I'll give it a shot. We've lost many compass to that thing. Send it to the scrapyard. Irasu has more than one crater, because he's erupted so many times. I heard most of them filled up with rainwater and became lakes. Calderas, huh? Calderas? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Hey, I got an idea. When you get to the lake, can you keep an eye out for weird animals for me? People all over the world tell stories about giant monsters living in lakes. Nessie in Loch Ness, Nahuelito in Argentina, Ogopogo in Canada. I can hardly keep track of them all. They say that all these sightings prove dinosaurs do still exist. But crater lakes are isolated. They're not connected to rivers. Yeah, but... Do you know Mokele Mumbembe in the Congo River? He can walk on land. So maybe they moved there from some other lake. Huh. You sure know a lot about UMAs. There used to be a guy in El Frente who was a hunter. He taught me lots of things. He even said he once went to a place called Isla del Monstruo. A hunter on Isla del Monstruo. Someday, I'm going to be a hunter and catch some rare animals. Right after we restore peace to our land, of course. Did you ever hear of the Loch Ness Monster? Now that one I know. Pretty much everyone's heard of old Nessie. Great, so I don't have to explain. I think she's a long lost dinosaur, don't you? Um, sure, why not? One of the compas gave me a book about it, with photos. It looks exactly like the plesiosaur. Then why does it only live in Loch Ness? Well, it probably got cut off from the ocean. Back when Loch Ness was part of the ocean, some plesiosaurs became trapped there when the climate changed. There weren't any mammals there, so no natural predators. Today's Nessie is descended from those plesiosaurs. Then wouldn't it make sense for there to be monsters in other lakes with similar climates? Exactly. That's why there's been giant monster sightings in a bunch of other places. Like Nahuelito and Ogopogo. I don't know if there's one in Irasu too, but I know there's definitely something living in Lago Cosipolca. You mentioned the Nahuelito. What is it? It's a plesiosaur that lives in Lago Nahuel Huapi in Argentina. It's described a little differently, but I'm sure it's basically the same creature as Nessie. Except for one thing. What? Well, according to one theory, it's the result of a nuclear test back in the 50s. What? There's no record of a nuclear test in Argentina in the 50s. At the time, the president, General Juan Perón, was pushing hard to industrialize the country. I wouldn't be surprised if he conducted a top-secret nuclear test before he was overthrown in a coup. Mm, sounds a little far-fetched.
far-fetched to me. You think? Then maybe Nahuelito really is a dinosaur. No, I, I didn't say that... I mean, it's really pretty obvious. Wait a minute. Thanks for clearing that up, boss. <laughs> dinosaur. What about the Ogopogo? And what kind of name is that, anyway? Ogopogo's a monster that lives in Okanagan Lake, in Canada. I guess it's an Indian name, because it's a legend passed down by the Indians. Uh, a legend, huh? Well, then it's probably not... There's written records of it, too! The first one was in 1872, and there's been more sightings since the start of the 20th century. Uh-huh. You starting to get into UMA's two snake? Yeah, maybe. UMA hunting! Now that's a real man's adventure. What do you say, Snake? After Nicaragua's at peace again? You want to go exploring together? Well, we'll see. Might not be such a bad life. Mokele Mumbembe lives in the Congo River. There's nothing mysterious about it, though. It's already been confirmed as a real living dinosaur. The local people know all about it. And when they were shown a drawing of a brontosaurus, every one of them said it was Mokele Mumbembe. Hmm. When peace returns to Nicaragua, I want to go to the Congo myself. Oh, the revolutionary movement in the Congo ended in failure, you know. Yeah, I know. I wish we could do something to help, but Africa's awfully far away. Africa. I wonder if El Che ever saw Mokele Mumbembe. I wonder if I will. Well, best to take care of business here before daydreaming about Africa. Yeah, I guess you're right.